I've been playing around with making some pizzas and I've decided to invest in the lowest probably priced entry level charcoal fired pizza oven which is this Jumbuck Torino charcoal pizza oven from Bunnings for the grand total at this particular point in time of $199 okay so um, we'll take everything out of the box we'll check everything is there you've got all the blurb and there's the instruction book and we shall begin to assemble it I won't bore you with the unboxing that's so boring well it's very neatly packed it comes um, it's a box within a box this bit here goes into that bit over there all very neatly done now we'll, uh, we'll take everything well everything out. appears to be in order and now I'll unwrap the parts and we'll begin the assembly Yay. first black mark bent damaged even in the box one of the problems with this assembly sequence is you have to try and get your fingers in there around that little lip and screw these things together now that sounds very easy but in practice it can be quite frustrating anyway I've got four of them on and we'll proceed the um, top shelf or as it is here on the bottom is easier because it actually fits on the outside it's, and it's centered so I would actually suggest that <laughs> and I did watch another fellow who threw the instructions away straight away um, probably a good idea because if you assembled this first I think you'd find it a hell of a lot easier doing it this way upside down and then put this one on so perhaps that's the Chinese people who manufactured this getting us back making it difficult in other words so now we can put the wheels on which should be a relatively simple matter of threading the actual wheel oh, don't drop the wheel on your toe because they're quite heavy and we use a lock nut and a washer I believe doesn't say the washer it just says a lock nut Ooh. We won't tighten that yet because, because we want to stiffen everything up before I go much further. Okay, so that's the wheels attached. Ripper. Tighten up all the nuts, I believe. Oh, I'm living dangerously now. I'm going against the instructions. The order of the instructions and I'm putting the handle on before I do what the instructions say I should have done which was put the door on but I think that's a bit silly because that would make it more awkward to get in here and also I place this on as you can see we shall move around here and I placed it onto the base but I have not yet bolted it up we shall do that in a tick and now we assemble the um, chimney now these little inserts here actually have the nut already pressed into it so theoretically it's very easy you just put that in there and you turn and then you screw it up easy peasy and the same with this one around here there are three I've already put two in so here's the third and if you've got big pussy paws like mine it can be awkward well, starting the thread that would be right wouldn't it? there we go now screwdriver to screw them tight then we'll assemble it and then we attach the chimney once again with the M5 screws and a nut here 
underneath. That was easy. Right, well, we'll assemble the doors. We've already got one on, as you can see. And what we do to assemble them is we place that up there like that. Make sure we get the silver rod to go through. And then move that through there. And then we have a number, a couple of cotter pins, which I happen to have over here. We slide one in there. Put the one in here. Very simple little mechanism. Very cheaply made, which is fine. And then we have these tiny little split pins, which then go in to the holes, and then we open them up and we have a hinged door. And then we have, and it's, oh, we haven't finished yet, we've got a couple of bits to go. Hang on, we've got two bits now, to go. I've just installed the um, two grates in there, like so. There's the ashtray here, and now I shall install the top grates upon which the pizza stone rests, and they go in like so, and then we have the pizza stone which will go in like so. And we have a pizza oven, all ready to get fired up and have a pizza made in it, but not today. Well, I've set my first fire in the um, pizza oven. As you can see, we've um, got some sticks, some natural fire lighters and a couple of um, barbecue fuel bricks and set it up here in the gazebo and I know I'm going to get smoked out but I just want to have a shakedown cruise so to speak here we're not going to be cooking anything we just want to see what the temperature rises to and how it goes as you can see we've got a good head of smoke going and this gazebo was actually um, a um, greenhouse we were it, actually partially still is as you can see it was originally my barbecue area but then we covered it with this um, plastic to keep it from the elements which is great but I might have to cut some holes in for ventilation although that area there through the door is open anyway so should be okay well the fire's been on now for um, 40 minutes you can see in there and the temperature gauge is up to 150 degrees um, C, which is 310 or something, 305 Fahrenheit. So that's not too bad, and the flames are, um, the coals are, are nice now. I'm, just, I'm, I'm actually just testing this to see how long it's going to take and what we have to do to move these things around to try and get a nice even heat. And the other thing is, the flue is about half open so I suppose if I bring that in a little bit and then we shut all the doors we shall see the temperature rise yet again what I'm trying to do is to really find out how high I can crank this thing up you might also notice that I have a combination of um, wood and the barbecue fuel briquettes because I was finding it was very hard to get these things to to really crank up initially so I think from my point of view some of these uh, sticks, which I have from the local um, cabinet maker, and then load on the um, briquettes or the hot hot things. What do they call them? 
hot shot barbecue fuel and that'll probably do it once we get them uh, underway I bought one of these um, temperature gauge things too and it's what was it showing there 218 degrees and that was in C and that one says it's just just actually under so <laughs> who do we believe 243 244 degrees and it says up there just under 200 so <laughs> which is more accurate well it's now um, 50 minutes and we've got the temperature right up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit which they tell me is um, the best between 450 and 500 to cook a proper pizza <laughs> so it looks like we're there so that's good 40 minutes just crank the fire up walk away let it make sure it burns and then make your pizzas up terrific and fire looks like that probably better if there's no flames I'd let them die down but hey that's pretty impressive and I pulled I've shut the flue here too and the one up on the I'll bring the one up on the uh, chimney down a bit uh, dampen that down a bit too and that'll probably even create more heat well it's been an hour and a quarter since I actually cranked this thing up for the very first time and um, for the last half hour I have actually been able to keep this consistently at 400 degrees Fahrenheit which should be more than enough to actually cook a half decent pizza so that will be the next thing but not today because all my pizza dough is now frozen and I'll have to thaw it out overnight and then make up some toppings anyway all in all this appears to be a very impressive little unit and it will certainly do everything that I want it to. Well done. Right, now I'm going to um, make a pizza or two and I've had this fire going now for about three quarters of an hour and it's sitting there at about 450 degrees Fahrenheit according to the temperature gauge there which theoretically is way hot enough for a pizza now I've just made this one inside um, so this is going to be the first attempt and I've, uh, whilst I've been inside of course the temperature has dropped slightly so I'm going to see if I can boost it up a little bit and then we'll put the pizza in okay well it's now up at 4.50, we're going to put it in. Here goes nothing. Ooh, look at that flame. I guess I'd better time it. Ooh. Of course there is no glass door so I can't see what's happening so I'll have to judge this temperatures now up to uh, 475 Woo, yeah baby well, I might just lay you down a bit Trusty spatula to lift, and I'm not quite sure how long this is going to take. There's always the temptation to open the door and it's been now, let me just have a look, it's been ooh, five, 
about nine minutes now this these things could take anywhere between eight to twelve minutes I guess but we'll have a little bit of a look and you can see in there that seems to be doing quite nicely but I'm a bit concerned about the bottom I'll have a bit of a look but the oven is actually back up at 400 over over 400. I'm just going to um, have a little bit of a look at the base oh man I actually oh, that looks pretty good to me I might just give it another minute Temperatures rising again, so it's um, it's a combination of this damper here and the flu damper, and I, that's where I've got that one set. That, that's what I noticed yesterday. Now we're up at um, 450, so I'd say this little pizza could very well be ready. Let's try it. Let's see if we can get it out because I don't want to burn it. Now, we'll give it another few minutes, certainly around the, oh, it's, it's looking good, looking good. That's, they do say that you're supposed to spin them around three times. Well, I'm a novice at this, <laughs> but hey, it's not turning out too badly at the moment. Well, I'm going to have a go at this, I'm going to take this out now. I have some more dough ready to cook. See, this is, this is the problem that I'm wearing. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Now, does that look like a pizza to you? It certainly does to me, Ollie. Now, i to make sure that's not too hot. No, that's all right. Have a look at this. Is that a pizza? Now, we shall let that. It's... I know where I made the error. Around here, I put olive oil in my mix, and they specifically say to you, don't put olive oil if you're going to be using a wood-fired pizza oven. Well, this is a charcoal pizza oven, but I've actually used wood. Anyway, I'll let you know shortly how it tastes. It's um, difficult to know what to believe as far as temperature is concerned, because if I use this particular thing here, that is showing me 470 degrees Fahrenheit and it's uh, over at the edge of the stone it's 466 so we're getting the heat in there but that only says 350 so that's the problem what do we believe do we believe the 423 or do we leave the um, gauge on the, the machine. I think I'm more apt to work with this one. And if you ask me why, because A, it's easier to watch. <laughs> and once I establish if, it, if sitting it between 450 and 500 or 400 to 500 is sufficient to cook a pizza then I can do it that way it's um it's not it's taking a little while to come back up there now mainly because I just put some more wood on the fire and you can see it's smoking its head off but hey that's what it's all about, isn't it? We're supposed to get that smoky taste. I'll come back to you in a short uh, space. The temperature gauge is rising quite rapidly now, so I'm going to put this one in. Yep, she's going up to 500. That should be good. Let's have a go. Ooh, look at that. Smoky. Yeah. Probably way too much flame. So, oh yeah. But they say the hotter the better, don't they? So that's now in at, um, oh, let me see, 
I'll give this another 8 or 10 minutes and we shall see what the result is. What I am noticing is there is a sweet spot with this particular little flu and I think I've that's about it because yesterday and today that flu I don't know if you can actually see I'll have to make a mark on it because that's when the temperature gauge really goes up and if you have a look there it's reading over 500 degrees on that gauge and the flu is just open oh a quarter all part of the learning curve this is the second one and um, it looks okay the the base is um, got that sort of leopardy skin I think as they say on the bottom of it uh, the fire is actually raging I've had it open to let some of that heat out because I don't need to use it anymore but anyway look this is absolutely wonderful as far as I'm concerned it's certainly doing the job and I just have to learn a little bit uh, better how to drive it but um, so far so good and I'm really happy with this thing for 199 bucks good fun anyway thanks for watching everyone hope you enjoyed it